Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about functions in C. A function is basically just a collection of code that performs a specific task. So what you can do is you can take a bunch of code, you know, maybe like five or six or 20 lines of code and put it inside of a function. And then when you want to access that code that's inside the function, you can call the function. And generally, when you create a function, uh, you'll design the function to perform a specific task. So the function will have a specific purpose. So I'm going to show you guys how to create functions, how to work with them, and we'll just talk about the basics of using functions. Like I said, a function is basically just a collection of code that does a specific task. So we can actually create a function here in our C program. Now you'll notice up here we have this block of code. It says int main, and there's an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly brackets. And we've kind of just been using this for the entire course, like up to this point in the course, we've just been kind of using this main uh, little block of code here, but actually this is a function. And sometimes you'll hear people call this a method as well. So function and method are two words that essentially mean the same thing. Um, but you generally in C, we're gonna refer to these as functions. But this is called the main function. And the main function is basically a function that's gonna get executed when we start running our program. And so we've already been using a function, this main function, but if you want, we could actually create other functions in our program. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So let's go down and we're gonna go here outside of this function. And the way you can tell we're outside the function is we're outside of this ending curly bracket. So down here, I'm gonna create a function. And when we create a function, we actually have to give C a couple pieces of information. The first thing we have to tell C is the return type of the function. And so actually we're gonna talk more about return type in the next tutorial, but for now just know that return type is basically the type of data that the function is going to return to the user. So sometimes your function can actually give information back to whoever calls it. In our case though, we're just gonna say void. And void basically means that this function isn't gonna return any information. That's the first thing that you have to tell C. The second thing we have to do is give this function a name. And generally when we're naming a function, we're gonna to wanna to name the function according to what it does. So in our case, we're gonna create a function that says hi to the user. So I'm just gonna call this function say hi because that's what it's gonna do, it's gonna say hi. Whenever I create a function now, I wanna make an open and closed parentheses and I'm gonna make an open and closed curly bracket. So now, any code that goes in between these curly brackets is going to be considered code that's inside of this function. So let me show you guys, I'm just gonna make this a very simple function. We're gonna do one thing inside of here. We're just gonna make a printf and we're gonna print out hello user. So I've created my function, it's called say hi. And inside of this function, we're just printing out hello user. So now let's go ahead and run our program and see what happens. So I'm just gonna build and run my program but you'll see up here that hello user doesn't get printed out, right? In other words, I came down here, I said printf hello user, but this didn't get printed out. And this is the first lesson with functions is that in order to use the code inside of the function, we have to call it. Calling a function basically means we're telling C that we wanna execute all the code inside of it. So if I wanna execute this code, I can call this function. And the way that I do that is just by typing out the name of the function and an open and close parentheses. So now, instead of just printing out nothing, C is actually gonna go over here and execute all the code in the say hi function. So let's run our code, and you'll see now we're printing out hello user. So the difference between this main function up here and this say hi function is this main function is a very special function, right? When we run our program, this main function basically gets called. Then if we want to use other functions, we can call them from inside of this main function. And that's sort of how this is going to work. So also I want to show you guys one other thing. I just want to illustrate um, the flow that these functions take. I want to show you guys how these get executed by the program. So I'm printing out top and I'm printing out bottom and I'm calling say hi right here. So now I'm going to run my program again and you'll see we're printing out top, then we're printing out hello user, then we're printing out bottom. And this might've looked a little bit better if I put new lines, but essentially what's happening is when C goes to execute this program, it's going to execute this first line of code, print F. So it's going to print out top. Then we're telling C that we want to call 
the say hi function. C is now going to jump over here to the say hi function and it's going to execute all of the code inside of here. So in this case, we just have one line of code, but I could put any number of lines of code inside this function. So if I had like five lines of code, it would execute all five of those lines of code. Then it's going to jump back up here and it's going to move on to the next instruction. So that's kind of how that works. And that's sort of the basics of writing functions. Anytime you have uh, a block of code or a bunch of code that does one thing or that you want to kind of encapsulate into its own little container that you can call, you can put it inside of a function and then whenever you want to access it, you just call it. But these functions can actually do a lot more. So one thing we can do is we can give these functions some information. So I can actually give this function a piece of information and it can use that information to do different things. This is what's called a parameter. And a parameter is basically just a value that we give to a function. So let's say in this say hi function, instead of just saying hi to the user, we wanted to say hi to someone specifically. Well, I can actually come down here in these parentheses and I can specify a function parameter. And I can specify a parameter a lot like I would specify a variable. So I could say, for example, char name and an open and closed square brackets. And I'm basically what I'm saying down here is this say hi function is going to take as a parameter, in other words, as an input, a string of characters called name. And what I can do is I can come down here and I can actually print that out. So I could say percent %s and we could print out name. Now, over here when I call this say hi function, because I specified that it's going to take a parameter, I have to give it a string. So I could give this a string like Mike, like I'll put my name in here. When I call this say hi function now, I'm passing the value Mike into this function. So Mike is going to get stored inside of this name array and we're going to be able to print it out down here. Let's go ahead and run our program and you'll see it says hello Mike. So instead of saying hello user now, we're able to customize what it says. The cool thing about this is I could copy this line of code. Like I could call this function a bunch of times with different names. Actually, I'm going to put a new line down here. So this is more obvious. So I could say hello Mike, hello Tom, hello. Oscar. Now when I run my program, it's saying hello to each of these different people and because we define the function and we can pass it different names. And depending on what we pass it, depending on the parameter that we give it, it'll perform its task a little bit differently. You can also specify multiple parameters. So let's say in addition to accepting the name as a parameter, we also accepted their age. So I could say char name, and then down here I can specify int age. And now we're basically saying that this is going to take an age as well. So I could say hello, and then I could say you are, and we'll say the age. So now over here, instead of, in addition to just saying name, we can also say age. So now when I run this function and when I call it, I have to also give this an age. So we could say like 40, 23, and 70. And now this is going to print out all that information for us. So hello, Mike, you are 40. Hello, Tom, you're 23. Hello, Oscar, you're 70. And you can pass as many parameters as you want into one of these functions. You always just have to make sure, though, that you're passing a parameter when you're calling the function, just like that. So that's the basics of using functions. And in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, this guy over here, which is the return type. And we're going to look at how we can get information back from a function. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.